Hello everybody, it is a beautiful mid-February afternoon and we have had a very early spring here in North Georgia. It seems like everything is a couple weeks ahead and I'm not complaining because I am sick of winter and I'm ready for prime herping season to begin. So with that being said, we're going to give the yard the first once over we've really had since it's warmed up and hopefully we'll see some of our first backyard snakes of the year. All right, well, that's our first six line race runner of the year. It's nice to get one early in hand because they are super fast once we get later in the year. This guy probably just came up out of brumation. Actually, I would assume this is probably a girl. It seems like the guys are usually a little smaller and they have blue on their chins, but that might be something that develops in breeding season too. All right, I'm sure we'll see more of these eventually, but we'll let her zoom. Try to bury right into the leaves right there. Eraser! Eraser! Wow! I would not have guessed our first yard snake of the year would be one of these. Hey. What's up, dude? That's cool. It's good to see this stuff producing. Well, this gentleman is probably going to be looking a little rough until this first shed. You can see he's definitely got some blisters, so we will let him go, but... Definitely nice to see our first snake of the year in the yard and our first big snake of the year too. Normally these guys come after the ring necks and stuff like that. So kind of a surprise, but uh, I'll just put him back under his tin. Is this our, is this our first racer of the year? This might be our first racer of the year, but either way, a welcome find. Nonetheless, I was starting to think we were going to get skunked today. All right, boss, make sure you're going under the tin or into the grass, that works too. Oh, he's coming back around. There he goes. Look at these ants. So many of them. They're not fire ants. All right, everyone. I decided that we're going to do a little bit of dip netting today now that we have finished flipping. It was decently productive. I'm just glad we got our first yard snake of the year, so that's really cool. And I'm gonna try to show you guys a new a little aquarium that I got similar to the ones Will has so that we can look at aquatic animals up close. This is a freshwater pond that has fish in it. Uh, later tonight, we're gonna visit a freshwater pond that does not have fish in it. And we're gonna kind of compare and contrast what we see in the water. Um, unfortunately, this water is a little bit mucky and full of vegetation. So it's hard to see in it while shining. So the easiest way to get into it is dip netting. So we're gonna do that. Oh, a newt and a big tadpole. And a fish. Look at this. Look at that. That's a big tadpole. That is a huge tadpole. All right, we'll throw the fish back. There's a couple fish, actually. Come here. And then, uh... Oh, yeah. Actually, we can put another one of those in there. And then we'll put the newt and the big tadpole in here. We'll go, a get a look at all those guys. Oh wait, is that? There's another newt. Here's another newt in the vegetation. Look at that. I'm gonna go through this net a little better. Cool. So many newts. Well, a couple of those newts were from a scoop earlier, but we're gonna go for scoop number two in this spot. the fish in that one. <laughs> I'm like closer to the shore was better. For real? Oh, we got a newt. 
He's got a big newt. Let's see. I saw him. Oh, there he is. Right there. I might be a little too close to him. I think that's the only critter in here. There's a little dragonfly larvae. All right, so newts are actually toxic. It's pretty well known. Um, I'm not sure how toxic they are in their adult stage. I know the F stage is supposedly the uh, the bad one, but I'm gonna pull the rest of these critters out and let them go so that we can look at the newts without having to worry about those guys getting exposed to concentrated newt toxins in the water. So. These guys are dragonfly larvae. Really cool if you're not familiar with them. They uh, will crawl up onto a stem or branch when they're ready to turn into an adult dragonfly and molt. And then a cool, beautiful dragonfly will come out. But I have no idea what kind. I do believe these are the same kind of dragonfly. They look very similar, but we'll throw them back into the pond. All right, here's our uh, big tadpole with a newt friend. That might be the biggest newt in there. I actually know that's probably the biggest newt. Look at that guy. But yeah, that's probably a leopard frog tadpole. Could be a bullfrog tadpole, but it's not gigantic really. All right, I cleaned their water out. This is a little more clear. Should make for better viewing conditions. As far as I know, these are the only salamander that breeds in that pond, just because of all the predatory fish that are in there. That's gonna be kind of the talking point of this episode is I'm gonna talk a little bit about how important it is to have fish-free wetlands around for amphibians. You can see when these guys go up and gulp air, they're actually getting air because they don't have gills, even in their fully aquatic stage. They just go up and get air from the surface. It's pretty neat. When they lay eggs, their larvae will have gills. Here's a good uh, male-female comparison. All right, there's the female, and uh, here comes a male now. You can see that big fan tail, the big muscular back legs. And then she's just kind of a, a normal looking newt, but in the water. This is highly entertaining, but it's time to let these guys go. So I'm going to get a couple quick photos and then we will return them to their vegetation in the pond. All right, newts, here you go. A little bit of siren action in the background. I let that guy go because Ben spotted a snapper. Look at that. So I had just told Ben that I have seen common snappers in here because he's a big turtle guy. Uh, I wasn't really expecting to see one because it's only happened once and sure enough, he spots that guy. My first common snapper of the year. That's cool to see because this pond's a lot clearer than the one that I've seen him in before. Yeah. Sir, are you aware that it's February? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to snack on some eggs. Nutritious. Look at that long neck. Look at his hands. They're so weird. Yeah, water mites are a thing. I got a little video of him zooming around. He's so fast, too. All right, it's quieted down a little bit over here. You can see we've got some probably toad tadpoles. Tons of them right here, and there's toads calling right behind me. Just so much life in these pools, though. We've only been here a few minutes, and we've already seen all of this. Oh, yeah. I'm there, I'm there too. Dang, look at these spotted eggs. Those are so blue, look at that. Oh my goodness. Look at those little salamanders under the macro lens. That is fantastic. You can see how much the blue changes depending on the angle of my light too. Really, really cool looking. There's a peeper. Thank 
So when Will was here a couple weeks ago and I had to edit, he came out to these pools and he said there were some weird salamander larvae in here. And these were what he was talking about. I have no idea what they are. If I had to just be a betting man and put money on them being something right now, I would probably guess that they're marbled salamanders, but I've never seen marbles in this pool. And they're just, they're so light colored. They're just really, really cool and weird looking little larvae. Do you mind, sir? We're trying to look at salamanders over here. But yeah, either way, ambistomatid salamander larvae of some kind, likely marbled salamander. But this is something that you are not going to see in a pond with fish in it, with the rare exception of tiger salamanders breeding in cattle ponds. They're just so cool. And they, they do kind of look like axolotls, and that's because axolotls are larval ambistomatid salamanders, just like these guys, just of a different species. Because we are not in range of axolotls here, and almost all ambistomatids look relatively similar when they're in their larval stage like this. So, very cool. We'll put these guys back in the pond. This caddisfly has got a little green spot on him. <laughs> these things are so cool. All right. There's some really blue egg masses. Look at these. All right, we got a couple of a couple of eastern newts. There goes one swimming past my foot. And there's another big gravid female right here. We didn't see any super obvious gravid females in the pond today, but check this girl out. I still need to make it to El Yunque. Look at these guys. They're just floating while getting it on. Those are spring peepers. You trying to drown her, man? Kind of looks like you're trying to drown her. <laughs> this could be us, but she's playing. She's looking at me like, help. All right, everyone. Well, it was a pretty successful day and night. Getting our first snapping turtle of the year was definitely a nice surprise and our first yard snake of 2023 today. And on top of that, we accomplished the main goal, which was to see a lot of salamanders between the, uh, the site that does have fish in it and the site that does not. And hopefully you guys see what I mean. The diversity in those fishless ponds is just incredible in comparison. Um, like the caddisfly larvae, many different species of amphibians breeding. And here is an example of a fish-free wetland that I built here in my own yard. Uh, this has only been here for less than six months. I guess we put it up in the fall. Maybe it was late summer. So maybe it's been here a little more than six months, but as you can see, the amphibians are already showing their appreciation by laying their eggs in it. This is an American toad egg mass, and uh, we really don't get American toads breeding here on the property. They don't like the pond, I'm assuming because of the fish, but weirdly enough, we do get fowler's toads breeding in the pond. So just an interesting, maybe some sort of niche or habitat partitioning going on between Fowler's toads and American toads. If you want a fish-free wetland in your yard, it's as easy as buying one of these little $15 blue kitty pools at the dollar store, filling it and putting it in your yard. And something will end up using it eventually, I can almost guarantee it. So with that being said, I'm gonna leave you guys with one more look at this double helix style egg mass from the American toad. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. found those guys in the yard or Caitlin found those guys in the yard and uh, they were not in the pond and I'm afraid they didn't know where it was so we put them over here.